Um, at this point, I'm going to talk about other ideas about pres presenting to the students. But if anybody wants to get some tea or, or, or pastry, also bathrooms are right out this door. Does anybody need to take a break yet? Okay, no, not too bad. All right, so a couple of things here. So, so what I wanted to, I, I play, this is my junker cello, this is what, but when I, um, I do a lot of kitty shows, kitty presentations, so I'm going to be talking a bit about some of the ideas that I've come up with through the years. I've done the San Francisco Symphony AIM program, which is Adventures in Music, and also I do outreach in Vallejo, I go into the schools, and in Oakland, so I get up in front of kids a lot, I do it with small ensembles, or, in this case, when I do my docentine, I'll be doing it alone. And um, one of the very first things that, that really made an impression on me in the Adventures in Music program, you go through a training before the San Francisco Symphony will let you go out and represent them. The very first thing they talk about, let the music speak first. Right now, even, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I would have lost the kids had I not tried to capture their attention right away at the beginning of the show. So typically what I'll do is I'll like... Um, 
age appropriate. Another idea is, of course, along with making the presentation your own, if you can get across the idea of what you really love in the music. I don't know about you guys, but, but every time I play music, there's always a part in the music that I really love to play. And like Carnival of the Animals, it happens to be the swan movement, okay? <laughs> so for sure, I will include that. I'll play that, just the cello line, when I do my dose of presentations. And the interesting thing is, I always play that that song. You see, now I'm going to call it song instead of movement from the symphony when I'm talking to the kids. This is one of my favorite songs from Carnival of the Animals. And for my son's school, I have an eight-year-old son, I've been playing at his school, and I did a little impromptu thing a few weeks ago. And one of the little kids, he, he's now in first grade, cutest little guy, he looked up at me and said, are you going to play the swan? Because he remembered that I played it last year. So although it may be kind of repetitive for them to get the swan over and over again, by the time he's in eighth grade, he's going to be singing along with the swan. And so I think some of that repetition is OK while you're still interjecting fresh ideas um, for these kids. Um, another big part of our job is to also prepare the students for what it, the concert behavior. OK. Now, we don't, we don't want to scare them about the symphony experience. We want to just prepare them for, um, you know, the, the correct kind of behavior. Um, I know for me, just to give you an idea, when I do a presentation, I talk to the students and I say, this is the kind of experience where you will get to use, I start with positive, that's what I'm trying to say here. I say, you get to use your ears, you get to use your eyes, you get to use your mind and you get to use your heart while you're listening to this music. This goes over well with the younger. Fifth graders, you put the heart in there and they might be like, you know, some of them might, might embrace that. But I talk about the positive first of what you can use, you know, while you're having that concert experience. And then I say at the very end, I might add in there, but for this experience, we're not going to be using our mouths for this. So you can just, you know, this is it. Everybody, come on, let's do this. Zip, zip. You know, and that, that's very um, helpful. Um, the other thing I like to talk about in the concert behavior, and Michelle, remind me, is there a list in the material? Yeah, I think in the it's prep in packet. The future packet so that's right. Got all that. Yes, so there is a list of what's appropriate behavior. Okay, so when I'm talking to older students, fourth, fifth grade, and older like that, what I like to talk about in concert behavior, I like to try to bring up what different concert experiences call for in behavior. So I want to acknowledge that, you know what, if you go to a rock concert, it's actually, usually, it's appropriate to stand up and, and you know, stand up out of your chair. But when you're at a concert for classical music, you actually stay seated, you stay pretty mellow until the conductor or the soloist invites you to participate. And I think this is key because sometimes there is a gesture occasionally, and I don't think it's going to happen in this particular concert, but there's an appropriate moment where Michael or the soloist may invite the students to clap along or something like that. So the other thing you might want to point out, you get a cue from Michael when the piece is over. And that's your cue to show your appreciation by clapping. So these are some of the ways that we can approach the concert behavior and try to uh, put it in a really positive spin instead of telling them, you have to, for 45 minutes, go in that class and sit down and not say a peep, sit perfectly still, you know because we want to still make it a, a moving kind of experience for them. Ben, can we talk yes. a little about the difference between what the conductor does at the end of a movement and the end of the piece? 
Because I yes. think there's a lot of adult audience that don't realize the conductor will turn around. That's not right. Just Robin and that's that's another thing you can work that into taking the cues from the conductor. Um, if it's the end, you know, and this is also this. We should have asked Michael this. Carnival of the Animals. It's a long. Um, succession. You know, I will ask this, and we will try to get a response from him, and we'll email you. You know, you're, you're not always supposed to clap in between the movements. So here we are with this long piece. Does he want people to hold their applause to the end? But the cue is, his arms go down, and he turns around and faces the audience, and that's your cue to clap. So I think this is a good question. I think we should get this. Um, we're going to ask where is he? No, he's run off now. We're going to ask him, um, you know, what, what, what does he think is going to be appropriate for these concerts with those, all those movements and that piece? You know, is he going to want to, you know, acknowledge each player? Um, so we'll check on that and we'll get back to you on that. But yeah, the cue is the arms come down, he gestures, he'll have, you know, the soloist take a bow, if it's the piccolo concerto, they'll have the orchestra stand up, that's another cue. Um, does that answer? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, because those are things you can have a class practice. You can, you can have a designated child to be the conductor and Excellent. come up and be conducting while you're playing part of the CD. And music stops and the conductor drops his arms, her arms, and turns around. Yeah. That's a wonderful idea. The next, um, the next thing I was going to say, you know, use your, use your music, use your boombox, and that would be a great way to do that. Um, you know, have them practice, you know, showing their appreciation. Um, the other thing, let's talk about props. Oh yes, Barbara. Uh, as regards <coughs> the child conductor, uh, I think it's important to uh, uh, for any. Uh, visit to the schools, the girls are selected as well as boys, because right. I remember one little boy saying to us, oh, girls can't be conducted. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Well, we, we don't want Marin Alsep to hear that. <laughs> She's a great conductor. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, let's talk about props. If you're comfortable using props, I showed you my big prop down here. Um, some of the other things I've used in the past, I, I take a baton, I have a baton, and when I actually let the children use the baton, you know, and they love this, it's a real baton, mine's pink, <laughs> you know, so um, I, maybe I'll make a boy hold a pink baton, that'll be so, get some rise out of them. The other thing I use, I have a little show where I do the four elements of music, so I've taken these bright colors, and I've put the words, and I'll have the students come up. And this, I'm not going to be using this for this particular docent show, but I just brought it along. You're going to have other props. We're going to have the orchestra um, posters. But this is just another way to show you um, yeah, different props. Four elements. Oh, what are the four elements? I'm sorry. This is this is very useful. This is, and I like to do this show is specially geared K through third grade. A lot of kids, they don't know this. Um, so we have, the order I usually go, I usually start with, oh, I know, I usually start with musician, because I, you know, if I, especially I'm doing, this is a solo show that I do, so I start, I am the musician, I play the music, and then, um, and if I'm playing something, maybe I like to do participation, so I'll have a kid come stand next to me and hold the card. The next thing is I usually think I do the composer next, because that's the, the man or woman who writes the music. Um, the next thing I do the conductor, and then I also you know bring the baton out at that moment. And then the last thing, I, I don't pull this out right away, it, it's kind of hard to realize that the audience is actually part, one of the four elements of the music. We put this in there, and first I'll ask them, what do you think the last part is, you know? Can anybody think, what, what could it be? It's part, yeah, yeah, right, well, um, the audience, if you don't have an audience, you don't have a concert. So you, I say you are the last element of the music. So we've got the, the musician, we've got the composer who does the music, writes the music, we've got the conductor, 
and we've got the audience. And actually, this is another, this was a concept that I borrow graciously from the San Francisco Symphony, because they used this theme one year when I did an AIM segment. Um, other props could be stuff like posters, puppets, instruments, I already talked about that, costumes, or whatever you can imagine. Um, does anybody have, uh, you know, some of you have done this before, are there any props that you've used successfully? Um, chopsticks make yeah. great conductors with songs. Great, chopsticks, okay. And uh, so they don't poke each other in the eye, like I don't know, a while ago, but Drinking straws. <laughs> oh, drinking straws. Excellent. They, a dual purpose. They can the and they can keep the souvenir. That's great. You've got pictures of composers. Oh, very nice. Pictures of composers. Oh, yeah. Very nice. And last year, our soloist. That's great. Um, who is this? Is this Valdi? Okay. okay. Right here. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Okay. Any, anything else? Any, any other ideas? Um, um, I use um, maps. Yeah, it's really a thought. 